how did this all come about with Ultimate Tag, guys, for you to, I imagine when you're given an opportunity that the three of you could all do a TV show together, you, you, you jumped at it, but I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, this opportunity came to me a couple of years ago, and they said that they had an opportunity for me to host an executive producer show called Ultimate Tag. And really the first thought that came to my mind was it would be perfect opportunity for my brothers and I to work together. I mean, we played tag in the backyard growing up as kids. We have this rapport where we kind of rip on each other a little bit, but we also bring the best out of each other. And I think that really came together in hosting the show. So it turned out to be a lot of fun, and, and we got to spend a ton of time together while we filmed it, which was really enjoyable. TJ? Yeah, like you said, I think the coolest part for us was that for Derek and I was that JJ even thought to include us into this show. And when he brought the idea of us hosting a game show or a, a competition show, um, Derek and I at first, I know I was nervous because I've never done anything to this magnitude. And um, to be able to um, commentate and, and spectate a, a truly once in a lifetime uh, experience with the two of my brothers um, and Ultimate Tag. Uh, like I said, JJ, we, we watched that growing up. We did tag growing up, and it's something that everybody can relate to. Um, and we all had our, our tough times in being hosts, uh, and me especially. I wasn't very good at reading off the teleprompter, and if it wasn't for these two to get me out of my own head, I don't know if I would have been able to finish the show. What do you mean? I mean, have you ever tried reading off a teleprompter with cameras and people all around? It, it, DJ, he literally hosts his own television yeah. show. What are, you doing? what are you talking about? I'm talking to the viewers, folks. Yeah, I mean, TJ, if, if they had Defensive Player of the Year awards for, you know, reading teleprompter, I'd have millions of them behind <laughs> you right now, sort of like your brother. But, so you didn't – you had some – you you there were some oh, – yeah. Encroaching oh, yeah. offsides, neutral zone infractions. I mean, is that basically what you had? All of the above. Um, I think every every rule was broken in the book. And uh, if, like I said, if it wasn't for JJ and Derek, I mean, JJ made it hard because he was smashing out of the park like he's done in every single day of his life. And mm -hmm. Derek was all right. I mean, just all right. But uh, I think I at the end, uh, from where we started, where we ended uh, was night and day. Derek. Yeah, he had his struggles. Um, you know, he had a very long, drawn-out answer there, but uh, <laughs> he struggled. He struggled with, te with the teleprompter. Um, you know, just it, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, it was a cool opportunity for TJ and I. Uh, we grew. Like I said, we we didn't know we had never done anything like that in our lives, so it was a very cool opportunity for us. Um, started out rocky, and we ended up, I think, coming out uh, much better at the end. And uh, we would love an opportunity for another crack at it in season two. So which one, which one, JJ, if you had to award most improved player to one of your brothers from the beginning oh. of shooting to the end, who would? That's not fair. I mean, most improved to definitely. Well, it has to be TJ. Yeah, I mean, so, but, but both of them, like for an older brother, it was a lot of fun to watch them both grow, and they really were legitimately good hosts okay. by the end of this show. But day one of filming was a rehearsal day. And it was, you know, I've been talking to the producers this whole time because I'm an executive producer on the show. We were, I was telling them, don't worry, my brother's got this, my brother's got this, we're gonna be great. <laughs> and we went in on the very first day to practice and we get in front of the teleprompter and TJ starts to read. And for about 20 minutes, we kind of went through these struggles. And the whole time, the executive producers are looking over at me like, man, you said we got this, like you said this was gonna be all right. This isn't looking good. <laughs> And, and to his credit, he came back on day two and just started to get much better and better. But day one, we did have a little bit of a rocky start. JJ just kept saying, when the lights come on, they'll be good. And I was like, yeah, I, sure. hope so. I hope I figured it out. How about this? Maybe, maybe you, TJ, you can be uh, most improved player. And Derek, you could be comeback player, you know, sure. of hosting. We could split these awards and we could figure that whole thing out. And so who are, who are the people who are running around? Like these are just regular, normal, everyday people that you would just say who wants to run around and play tag on Fox with the, the Watt brothers kind of being the judges here? Is that what it is? So the, the taggers, are, our professional taggers are legitimately some of the best athletes in the world. They're parkour uh, background for the most part. Um, one of them is, is the fastest parkour athlete in the world right now, I believe. Um, just some truly – phenomenal athletes and, and uh, you'll see I mean just by looking at them you can tell they're they take care of their bodies they they just train super hard and, and they're they do some incredible things and, and um, the, the competitors are some everyday just everyday people that, that wanted to compete and some of them also have tremendous backgrounds former 
athletes themselves growing up. Some were Olympic athletes um, and, and just kind of people that wanted to give it a shot. And, and uh, we've got kind of the, the wide range of athletes and, and it was cool to hear their stories and, and see them compete. Um, and it got, it got uh, intense for, I mean, it was a grand prize at the end, but it was mainly for pride and, and they wanted to win and, and compete against those taggers as well as the other competitors. Rich, if you're asking if you can compete at some point in the future, I think we could possibly make that happen. Well, here's the deal, JJ. You've seen my straight line speed um, <laughs> every year. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I guess I can work on my uh, side to side. I can kind of work on that. Are you more confident or less confident in your lateral agility? I think my lateral agility um, can be worked on. And I think I could. Look, I've been running from people my entire life. So I I just wondered, did I hear the words professional taggers? Did I hear those words? Like, is there, there's such a thing where you can be- The greatest job in the world, professional yes. taggers. What, what is that? I guess you guys are technically, you know, you know, rough, rushing we, the pass or you're professional. We have a team of 12. So like picture American Gladiators back in the day, where you have like Nitro, you have like a Turbo. Right. We have our team of professional taggers and they each have their own personality and their own kind of mantra that they've built. Mm -hmm. And so every week on the show, they're the ones that you have to get by if you want to win the prize. So like Derek said, some of them are parkour, some of them are CrossFit athletes, some of them are former college athletes, and they all are, take a ton of pride in protecting the ultimate tag arena. So it's a lot of fun to watch them. And like I said, they have personalities, and some of them are legitimately psychotic. Well, I'm, I'm going to be locked in. My kids are fired up about the Masked Singer finale. And again, that's Wednesday night. And, uh, and you guys are right on, I mean, talk about a great, you know, time slot for you to come out of the box, the mass singer. Yeah, is it number one show on television, I believe at the time. So we're looking forward to uh, capitalizing on that. You know that, I mean, by the way, I appreciate using capitalizing that that's a big pressure. You got to hold time slots. That's basically, this is what you, you know, this is what you guys have to do. I mean, our first option was the, the slot following the Rich Eisen show. Oh, so option two, they said you could follow number one show on TV. As we you know exactly what to say to the host, man. You're, you're the savvy veteran of this brother group. That's for damn sure. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.